we will be focusing on the problems and solutions of the magnetic gate. To have a good working magnetic gate, two requirements. One, there should be very low input resistance to the approaching rotor magnets as it passes through the gate. The other requirement is it should be a good clean break as it comes out of the gate. There shouldn't be a high pullback force. Those are the two requirements and that's what has been uh, a problem. Also locking at the gate point. Some of the solutions. I have my magnets and iron bars up here. I have a little race car. I have some neo magnets on there. So I'm going to push it into the gate. Start back here so you can see there's no or very small input resistance to the incoming rotor magnets. We'll go slow. We'll be approaching the firing point here. And you'll notice it'll actually pull itself through. about 10 11 inches and so you can see that it was very low input to the high output the output magnitude should be much much greater than the input force required to push it through the gate and you can see it's very obvious that there's quite a kick Now that we get into the other side, then we're okay. This is the passive and active side. This is the dynamic kinetic side. We're actually taking a passive force magnets, which is a static force, and we're changing it into a dynamic active force. I have some theories of why this is working, but they're only guesses. But it's apparent that we're taking static magnetic forces. We'll approach the gate again. It'll fire anywhere in here. As you get closer here, then it'll have more pullback. So I just picked a uh, spot where it was pretty low. There's a little bit right in right there, about three, four inches. But as soon as you get past that, okay, just so you're aware of that. Okay, here comes that firing. So we're taking static forces, changing them to dynamic, which I don't see that too often every day. Some of the basic requirements of over unity, as I understand them, is that the output should be much greater than the input. That's the basic uh, definition. So that seems to be right. I'll show you how I came about this discovery. Of course, it was accidental. Most things are. Uh, here's kind of a nice little, uh, you know, you push. I'm going to go into the, you know, either way is okay. You push an inch, you get an inch. You push an inch, you get an inch. That's, that's pretty basic. And yet this thing here, you push an inch and you get 11 inches. So anyhow, I thought that was quite... Okay, here's what happened. I was working with gate, gates and so forth, and one of the things I was trying, I had a bar metal in between two magnets, north and south. Well, I see if there'd be any action here, 
for reaction. And it seemed like it would either lock up or this is about as much as one side as the other. So I had uh, taken magnets apart and I realized something. I still had another same pole, another north. And I looked at that and I thought, well, here's my south here. It's further away than my north. So perhaps this is drawing my north face down, getting it away from my south pole. South and north still looping around up in this area. But it seemed like maybe the north pole was being drawn down here by itself, more prominent, more or less a one pole magnet. So anyhow, I uh, brought this up to my little car. And I had a reaction. This is something you can make yourself. It didn't seem to have any input resistance, but I did have some output. But I found later this has some shortcomings. It has pullback and so forth. But if you're high enough, it doesn't seem to come into play much. So this is something you can prove to yourself that there's something going on here. Okay. So we're going to come back in just a little bit and I'll show you some other variations. Okay. I have a uh, more compact version. They're not quite as powerful, but they have a different setup of magnets in the back. Anyhow, basic thing. Has very, very low input resistance. There is some. You can see kind of the wheels coming back a little bit, but pretty minor. And then it'll, it'll come in there and see that even at the firing point, there's no pushback. not as strong but as you move further in you have a little bit more strength usually you have a little bit more input resistance as you're going closer to the magnet setup but you get a little bit more oof so I thought well what happens if I had two of these activator bars I call this an activator bar that really fires the whole thing so if I had two of these things uh, one uh, thing about this system and working is it's all perpendicular lines. It will not work on a rotating system. Uh, the magnets become interplayed and they don't really work. So it's a straight line version. So, uh, so anyhow, I thought, well, how could I get it to come around again? Let's say it would fire. Uh, let's say I, I move it half inch. So I get down here and I turn the car, that's the only thing I had to do, and then push it another half inch, and then another half inch, and then another half inch. So let's say I had uh, six inches. So I have six, 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 and six. I'd have 24 inches of travel with only maybe an inch or two at each one. So uh, you might have four, five, six inches of uh, movement and you have your 24 inches of travel. So I think that's pretty valid. I did not try it with four but it worked with two. So uh, I'm going to set up and we'll come back for the, uh, the large one. We'll finish up with some comments. you're working with these magnets, neo magnets can be very powerful and take you by surprise. So be very careful. It's your own responsibility, of course, if you work on anything like this. But uh, I wanted to show you the, the different reactions as it goes closer to the magnets. So out here, uh, it's very, very, very clean. I didn't really experience really too much input resistance at all on uh, any of these uh, spots. 
but uh, as you get closer then your pullback becomes more prominent but still the magnitude of output to input is enormous and you notice how it goes further every time now if you get in here then uh, you can really have some strong reactions here see what happens and uh, see that it pulls it around there's a lot of interaction of forces in this they're about 12 inches and you see why it's pulling back a little bit more but really the uh, magnitude output is a lot you can work with uh, different angles in here there's more input resistance of course but you can work with different angles so this seems to be a working magnetic gate the requirements are satisfied the input resistance is very 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 low compared to the output force through the gate very obvious the basic definition of over unity as I understand them more power out than power in let's say I push that a little bit so we'll fire it one more time and thank you for watching no batteries no electricity required